Welcome to the Tony Gaskin Show, best-selling author, celebrity life coach, and international speaker. The purpose of this show is to bring you motivation, inspiration, and education in the areas of life, love, and business. Thank you for joining me. Now let's get started. Hey, thank you so much. Great to have you. Another episode of Talks with Tony received a question from a young lady, and it says, is it normal for a man to secretly watch porn in a relationship? And, you know, that's a deep one, and it's a tough one. But I tell you what, it's it's kind of a catch-22 with it. So I've talked to men before who watch porn or who have been addicted to porn. One gentleman I met, he wrote a book about porn addiction. And I can't recall the title of it, but he actually went through my life coaching certification program. Now, just in full transparency, I've never watched a full porn movie. I have seen them online once Googling a client that hired me and she told me that's what she did. And I Googled her name. And so I saw like 15 second clips. I was like, man, I can't believe this stuff is online. Um, In college, My teammates, I played football in college. My teammates, and they might be mad with me for telling on them, but I got to tell them, y'all. But but my teammates used to get together, together in the room and watch porn together for hours. And, you know, randomly, I was in there with them one day for about 15 minutes. See, I kept me a girlfriend. So this is the thing. Some men watch porn and some men live porn. So the thing about it is you kind of you have to see if you got one or the other or if you got somebody who's kind of doing both. But men who, you know, have sex and they're they're sexually active, they may not feel the need to watch porn. But men who may not be satisfied in the bedroom or they may be with a certain type of a woman, but they really are attracted to another type of woman or they saw porn before they were sexually active or early on. And they formed an addiction because it's almost like losing your virginity. So they have created a spiritual tie, a soul tie to this porn. And so they are watching it because of the release that they get. So it is a release, no different than watching a sports game, no different than playing a video game. Whenever you are stimulated, your brain, it releases chemicals, whether it's dopamine or serotonin. It's releasing chemicals throughout the body that alters the way you feel. So when we do certain things, it may make us angry. It may make us happy. It may make us laugh. And so that feeling can become addicting if you can create that feeling on demand. So if I'm feeling a certain way, just feeling like blah, I may turn on a comedy special on Netflix and see if the comedian will make me laugh. If the comedian makes me laugh, it's like, whoa. If I'm on Instagram and I go to the popular page and I see a certain comedian and it is funny, I'll watch three or four or five or six or seven of that comedian's videos because it's really funny. You know, I like this guy now on Instagram called Country Wayne. And, um, you know, he makes some pretty funny stuff. At first it wasn't funny at all, but then it was like real funny. And then Kev on stage, you know, that's my boy. Kev, he'll hit you with a funny one, you know, every now and then he'll have a super funny one. And so that it makes you feel a certain way. So men who are watching pornography, that is their sport. That is their comedy. That is their video game. That is their release. It is a very perverted way to get that type of release. You know, they're seeking pleasure. It is perverted. It is very dangerous. It is not normal. But I am not in the bedroom or the bathroom with men on a regular basis. Never at all. And so unless a guy comes to me and expresses this to me, then I have no clue of what he does. I can tell you that I do not do it. Now, and even if I did, it's like, man, can somebody even admit to that? But but you know me, if you listen to me, I'm very transparent and sometimes too transparent. Sometimes could be some people say I'm too vulgar or too raw or too real. But I do not watch porn because it does not do anything for me. 
the guys who have I have met who have who say they watch porn, I kind of look at them, you know, in if you put it back in school, they would kind of be labeled like, you know, the nerd or the lame or the cornball, you know, so it was kind of like the outside guys who maybe really didn't have a lot of girls, didn't really have a lot of interaction with girls. And so that porn allowed them the opportunity to really explore a woman's body and how it works and what all it does. And then it's almost like they're watching a tutorial to learn what a man should do in the bedroom. So that is why some people watch it. And so you have to look at it and you got to ask yourself, is it a deal breaker for you? For one, if you're Christian or you, you know, you believe in God, you're, you're Christian, then it's a sin because, you know, Jesus said, if a man lusts in his heart, then he's committed adultery. So me as a Christian man, I can't watch pornography because it would be adultery because I would be lusting in my heart. So I cannot indulge in pornography. Another bad thing about pornography is if you watch it, you're feeding lust. Anything you feed, it gets stronger. So as you're feeding this lust, eventually you're going to get tired of just watching this on the screen and you're going to want to reenact it in real life. And so, yes, first you may reenact it with your wife. But then after that, if you get tired of her because on the porn, you're seeing all these different sizes and shapes and different women. Now, when you meet these sizes and shapes in person at the grocery store, at the gas station, at Starbucks, at Barnes and Noble, you may be so you know, full of this lust, this lust demon, this lust monster that you've created by feeding it on a daily basis that may give you the strength, the courage to approach this woman who looks similar to a woman you saw on your porno. So now you approach her, hit on her. She happens to be single. Y'all hit it off. Y'all start talking you never tell her you're married or you're in a relationship. You hit it off, and next thing you know, you're trying to reenact what you saw on the por- porno with this woman. Now, woo-woo, this too real here. Can't monetize this on YouTube. So you have to ask yourself, is it a deal breaker for you? For me personally, it will absolutely be a deal breaker. If I were a woman, and it's a deal breaker for me as a man, if I had a woman into porn, I, I got to let her go. I, I will have to let you go because it, it just, it is not, to me, it's, it's borderline mental health issue. I'll be honest with you. To enjoy watching other people have sex, to me, that's a borderline mental health issue. Now, there's going to be some people that's mad with me for saying that. And I, and I apologize for offending you. I'm sorry and not sorry. But you need some therapy. You need to go to a therapist. That is not normal. That is not normal. It is not healthy. It is not smart. Some people say, oh, well, I watch it with my partner, you know, because it's like foreplay or I watch it with my partner. No, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. You cannot play around with lust. You cannot play with lust because where you maybe can control your lust and you can take it out on your partner, your partner going to end up cheating on you. Your partner will end up cheating on you or you're going to end up cheating on your partner because lust, unlike thirst, cannot be quenched. When you feed it, it gets bigger, it gets better, it gets stronger, it gets more demanding. It will cost you more than you can afford to pay. It will take more from you than you have to give. You cannot feed lust and play with lust and expect it not to ruin your life from the inside out. So... To all the ladies wondering that, is it normal for a man to secretly watch porn? It is not. Because, and also the key word here is secretly. If it was normal, then he would not be secretly watching it. He would be open about it. You wouldn't have to sneak on his computer or his phone and catch him. He would be open about it if he felt like there was nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with it but he knows that there's something wrong with it because he knows what is going through his mind. He knows what is happening in his heart. He knows what it's doing to his spirit. He knows the control that it has over him in his life. 
And, you know, I've had men go through this and then they feed that lust so much that they have to take, you know, masturbation breaks at work. And uh, I mean, you know, we, we grown folks, we having real talk. So when you get to that point to where you are feeding that demon, you're feeding that spirit, it will take control over you. Don't ever invite the devil into your house and expect him not to run things. If you invite him in and you're going to play with him, you're going to sit down and have dinner, he's going to take everything you were. He's going to take you for everything you have, and he's going to ruin your life because he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He does not take any prisoners. He's coming to kill everything in sight. So he's going to kill your relationship with your spouse. He's going to kill your relationship with God. He's going to kill your relationship on your job, with your boss, with your kids, with your friends, with your family, any vices that you're entertaining. So I'm here to tell you it's not normal. Me personally, I would talk to the person. I would talk to them about getting therapy. I would go to therapy with them. I would, I would drive to the therapist with them, let them go in, and, and I'll sit in the car to make sure they're getting therapy. I'll walk them all the way up to the door, give them a hug and a kiss, and, and go sit back in the car and make sure they're in the therapist. And help them get therapy and see if the therapy will make a difference. It's above the pay grade of a life coach. I'm a life coach. I coach people every day. But it's above my pay grade because with that, you need a diagnosis. You know, it's a treatment plan for that. And that's above a life coach's pay grade. We're not trained to deal with that. But I can tell you that you need to go a little further. So be very careful with that. And, and remember, I didn't really expound on it, but... Ask yourself, is this a deal breaker for me? If it is a deal breaker for you because you don't agree with it, because you feel like it's detrimental, you feel like it could be a hindrance to the relationship, you feel like it can introduce some sin into the relationship, you feel like it is perverted and dangerous to play with, that's your right, that's your belief, you can stand by that. I support you in that. That's what my decision would be, but to each their own. So I would say be very careful. Be very careful with that. And I hope you're able to get to the bottom of it and work it out. And to anybody struggling with it, my heart goes out to you. Seek help. Talk to a therapist, you know, and, and really work on that. Because it may have become normal to you. You may have normalized it in your mind, but it's not normal. It is not normal. It is not healthy. Um, it is not smart. Thank you so much. For sending in your questions, if you have a question, make sure you send it in to inbox at TonyGaskins.com. Inbox at TonyGaskins.com. Now, I'm answering questions on the podcast, but I will be answering different questions on different social media. So on Instagram, different questions. Facebook, different questions. So if you have social media, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook, and I look forward to talking with you soon. 